Joy's Workshop. My name is Anne Marie and I love to make things with joy. If you like to make things, you have found the right place. Please like, subscribe, and share. And let's get into it. All right, so this month was the Sarah Challenge where she challenged me to make seven outfits for her that would cover from work to evening and all the other occasions in between. And she challenged me to make them reversible and one piece items. She wasn't interested in uh, separate. She wanted one piece items. She said one and done. So this video is about some of the hacks and um, process I use on each of those garments. I made 10 garments in total. She only asked for seven. Uh, it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show you on each garment some of the things I did to make them possible and also my philosophy about making reversible garments. Okay, so what had happened with reversible, um, what had happened was <laughs> with reversible garments is that very often sometimes I would be making a garment and the facings were so extensive I was thinking to myself, if I have to do that many facings, why don't I just make it reversible? Doesn't necessarily make sense, but that was my reasoning. And so quite a few years ago, I started making reversible garments. Now, I will show you some of the failures and some of the successes, and then I'll explain to you my technique to decide what should be reversible and what you should leave alone. Let's start on a bright note. First thing I'm gonna show you is a reversible wrap skirt garment. It is Ankara on this side, and on the other side, it is a luxurious tiger duchess satin print, or taffeta, taffeta. All right, what's wonderful about it is, th this item can take you from daytime to nighttime. It has pockets in the sleeves, it has separate hems, satin for the taffeta, cotton for the Ankara, beautiful. And for my apple shape, it gives me an hourglass figure because the volume of the skirt underneath poofs out and gives me a faux hourglass shape. I will show you a picture of me in it over here. Everything about this skirt is a win-win. I've used it multiple times. It really works out fine. The, um, the taffeta works very well with this lightweight Ankara. All right, and that's gonna be one of the points of my uh, do's and don'ts. Now let's see a disaster. Now let's look at this skirt and you'll see how I uh, how I thought it was gonna work out and it didn't work out. All right, so this is a denim skirt in this beautiful fabric that I bought umpteen years ago. I stitched in the pleats. I thought it was beautiful. And I thought, wouldn't it make a great reversible skirt? So here it is in yellow. Now, it should have been okay, but it's too heavy. It's too heavyweight denims and the skirt's too heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I put it beside my uh, couch. I'm gonna take it apart and make it two separate skirts. Still plenty cute. I love the um, raveled um, edge and everything. Too heavy, not quite right. All right, so that was another, that was, it was not exactly a disaster, but it helped form my philosophy about how and what things you put together to reverse. Now I've also gone the other way. I've reversed something and I'm afraid I don't have that to show you because I did recycle it into something else. Um, I did have a dress that, matter of fact, I pulled the um, reversible zipper out of that to make Sarah's brown and uh, cream beautiful little dress here. I pulled the zipper out of it because I used an Indian cotton, lightweight, floaty, almost tissue, like, and I rever reversed it with another Indian cotton. And even I figured with the two of their weight, it would be strong. No, it was just flimsy like tissue and it would ball up and do all kinds of things. So too light, 
wasn't a good way to go either. So I found that the balance, if you decide to reverse an item, it's nice to have a heavier weight with a lighter weight. Not too light, not too heavy. And you will see them when you put them together if they move accordingly. Another hack for when you make a reversible um, garment is if you can leave the hems free so that there is no settling and bunching after the fact. Because in the case of, say, this skirt, if I had attached them together at the bottom and they have these different weights, no matter how long I hung it before I cut it and did the hem, they would eventually, there would be bunching. My bet would be on the case of the lightweight Ankara. I have a feeling that the taffeta would have stayed strong and stayed um, um, not brittle, but firm. And that eventually this would start to sag. I just think so. So if you can leave the hem free, hack number one, you're good. Or I guess that's hack number two. Hack number one is choose the two weights that work together. Something crisp, something light, something lightweight, something heavier. It has to be a balance, not too much light, two lights together or two, um, or two heavies together don't necessarily work out. Let me show you a few more of my successes. This shirt, I will find the um, I will find the uh, company I bought this pattern from is made up of a set of triangles, and it was one of my one of my first endeavors into reversal reversibility. Because what's so cool about this is these are this shirt is made of uh, rectangles, and they're only connected by these little dedic um, decorative um, stitches, these oval shapes. So on one side. It is this beautiful sand washed blue fabric. And on the other side, it is a beautiful Indian inspired with a beautiful border at the bottom. So it can go both places. All right, and I made a skirt to match it as well because I was going to a wedding, um, um, an Indian wedding, and I wanted to have two options in one garment so that my um, luggage would not be that heavy. All right? Now this garment is from Ankara Week last year. It is a lightweight Ankara inspired. I'm not gonna call it Ankara fabric. The design is Ankara, but this is not 100% cotton. This is a polyester blend. When you wash the wax out, it becomes fluttery. It is ideal to pair with an actual Ankara fabric that is 100% uh, cotton and is a bit more firm and substantial. So together, they made this beautiful dress that I've worn on uh, several occasions. So my hack number three is when you're dealing with reversibility and you have a, a double-sided zipper or a single-sided zipper, it is in your best interest to create some kind of closure at the top to help support the zipper because as you move around, and some of us who are apple-shaped, the zipper can start to slide down. And it's, an, it's a wonderful opportunity to use some decorative pieces. Now you can use, let me show you some ideas. You can use a larger hook and eye. Um, these are a bit bigger than the normal hook and eyes um, in black. And I think, I believe I got this at Joann's or um, House of Fashion in Houston. But I love whenever I see these kind of pieces at um, Joann's or any sort of button place where they show a pretty decorative catch. I like to um, stock up on this. This is one. This is my favorite. They sell these at Hobby Lobby. I absolutely love them. I think they're beautiful. Don't go buy all of them. I'm coming back to get some, some more. No, you can buy them online at Sewology Buttons. And they 
have a lovely look to them and they also can secure the uh, top of the um, zipper in place. You only have to put them on one side and they do, they do the work. This next dress is a Rachel Comey Vogue pattern. Um, I was inspired to make this reversible because the sleeves needed to be lined and there was also the facing around the neck edge of the dress. I will show you me wearing it over here. Now, I lined it with a lightweight Ankara fabric that I thought was heavyweight, but when I washed, um, when I washed it, some people don't wash their Ankara, but I did in this case, and I found that this fabric was um, lightweight, where this House of Mami Wata um, purchase was the full true Ankara. This is 100% cotton too, but it the um, the wax was making it firm. This was definitely Ankara, 100%. So, hack number four, when you're making a dress such as these, and I, you know you love a pocket, do not place the pockets on each side of the garment in the same place. Let me explain that to you. In other words, if you place a pocket on the right side of your garment on this side, then place the pocket on your reversible on the opposite side to reduce the bulk. So you can have a pocket, one pocket on each side. Now, so this is on one side of the garment when it's when it's being when I'm wearing it on this side, but when I'm wearing it on this side, it's on the opposite side. So there's not two um, pockets rubbing against each other or creating um, bulk unless you want that. Now, in the case of my wrap skirts that I showed you originally, I wanted that bulk because I wanted the skirt to softly move out to give me that appearance of an hourglass shape. Let me make this separate. It is very, very important that you wash your garments because you are dealing with two different types of fabric and you need to find out how they're truly going to um, behave. You do not want to make a wonderful reversible garment. Wear it, love it, wear it on both sides, put it in the washing machine and one side shrinks in and the other side goes out. It could happen wash your garments, pre-wash your garments before you construct your reversible garments. Now for this next hack, I'll include a card about right here. When you are making something that contrasts highly when you see each side, in other words, it's like this on one side and then the other dress, now remember, when you're reversing, it's two items that you're making, two full items, and it's completely different on the other side. Sometimes you do not want these edges to roll over. Normally, I would understitch a garment to make sure that something doesn't roll at the collar or around the, ne at the edge of um, sleeves or things, um, uh, armholes, not armhole, what's the word? Dress straps. Okay, so, um, but in the case of this, I don't wanna top stitch. I don't, I don't wanna do that. So what I have done is, and, I'll sh and the hack is on the card, is when I stitched this seam, I included some stitch witchery on the way. Just in case you're a new sewer and you don't know what stitch witchery is, hold on a minute. This is stitch witchery. It's a fusible web that almost is in a tape shape. And if you follow along on my hack, you'll see how I stitched it into the um, seam around the neck edge or places where it was potentially for the colors to roll and ruin the effect of that dress. And so then I stitched it and I trimmed it. Now I very carefully, when I trimmed it and turned it inside out and ironed it, it held it in place. So there's no rollover 
when she wears the dress and I'll show you an example of her wearing the dress on both sides over here. So you can see that there's no roll over. The Stitch Witchery keeps the colors on the right sides. Another tip when making um, reversible garments is sometimes you need to add or you would like to add a trim to differentiate your size of your garment. In this case, in this jumper, I chose this beautiful matching soft uh, trim to separate this green and white from this green and white. I thought it was highly effective. I'll show you another um, trim I used. On this garment, I used a tiny pom-pom trim to separate the black lace from the shimmering purple. It's highly effective and this trim is very, very soft. So um, I would not recommend piping. I feel like piping would hold a shape and in some case, unless unless it was necessary. I have done a, a top with, um, with um, piping, but not reversible. So as you can see together, you can see through these, but together they work very well. Now, sometimes the fabric choices you make don't allow for a inset pocket. In other words, the dress is so smooth, the outfit is so close that you really cannot have the bulk of a, a drop-in pocket at the side. So let me show you what I do in those cases. Okay, so this is the romper from McCall's A245. I'll show a picture of Sarah wearing it over here. As you can see, it is sleek and smooth, and she still wanted to be able to slide her phone into it. So that requires you looking at this another way. So this might be very hard for you to see, so I'll follow along with your um, with my finger. Once I decided where Sarah about where Sarah on this um, garment needed her pocket to be placed and it's already reversible I determined that from here down to here was optimum for her because she could slide it in and her phone would fit right here but remember it's a close fitting garment so I had to open up my garment and make sure I lined up the seam lines of the pocket together to make sure they were in the exact right place before I stitch this. Then at the pocket edge where I where she's going to slide her phone in. It's so good you can't, I can't find it myself. Wait. Hold hold there it is. Okay? So what I was what I did was I turned my seam away from the pocket opening on one side and then I slip stitched it in place so that that it was enclosed on this side and then I stitched this piece in place here and it provided a pocket so that she could slip her phone in there and it's very very close to her body Okay, so let me say that again. The two garments line up together along this line. I attach them, after I decide, I decide how big the pocket is. I stitch it in place where the person wants the pocket to be. Now it's time to do cleanup and make sure that the seams agree with one another. So, this is the opening. So I stitch along the two seams, I, 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 I line them up and then I stitch down to the bottom of where the pocket is because I'm kind of forming the pocket. You don't want your phone slipping out that way and hitting the floor. So you create a little, uh, a way that it cannot get out that way because you've already stitched around this way. Then you have to do cleanup. So you have to, Move that hem from the other fabric. You need to fold it or push it towards the other side and stitch this line, seam, slip stitch it in place that it covers it, right? 
I hope I'm being clear. See the slip stitches right there. So I covered, I, I just pushed the seam in the opposite direction and I slip stitched it in place. That creates like, and then I'm just gonna finish with a, with a, um, a hem, with a um, stitch along this outside of the pocket so it doesn't flip around and she can slide her phone in close to her hip. All right, so that's what she required. Now you may need a pocket for many different things, but that is what she required for this item. All right, I hope I'm being clear. So reversibility is a wonderful thing. I've made many items, uh, made them reversible, and it's been great, especially when you're traveling, that you have two options with one within one outfit. You do have to watch out for weight, you have to balance those things out. And then it's entirely up to you. The sky's the limit. With some of the hacks I showed you, you can have purple on one side and yellow on the other if you so choose. But I hope you enjoy this video. I hope that you understand um, some of the tricks to use when you are making reversible garments. So let me wrap up. You can, one, decide on if your weights are compatible, if your two items come together one firm, one lightweight, or evenly matched so that you don't have too heavy or too light a garment. Two, double-sided vipper, <laughs> double zippers are a wonderful invention that you can use in the backs of your dresses and garments that you make. Support those zippers with a really beautiful catch at the top so that nothing slides down. You can use these in the back. Stitch Witchery is a wonderful addition to a seam to keep fabrics from rolling from side to side. Remember one of the hacks is that you can use an intermediary trim in order to separate both sides of your garments. In this case, it was the pom-poms. And in this case, it was the green lace. As far as pockets go, if your pockets are bulky and you do not want them to add to your hips, then you need to place one pocket on one side in one fabric choice and one pocket on the other side in your other uh, fabric choice in your reversible um, garment. Don't put them both on the same side because if it is a drop pocket, they will rub against each other and stick out. You want to put one on each side of the color. You do lose one um, pocket, but you can be, you'll be all right with one pocket. Now, if it's a close fitting garment, then you're going to need to um, stitch. You're going to have to stitch a garment into the side, sandwiching both your front garment um, fabric and your back garment fabric. So you'll have to um, face that out. I hope I was clear on how to do that. If not, rewind and go back and look and see how you can do that. Another hack is to let your garments hang. Once you've completed your garments and everything is left but the hems, let them hang at least 24 hours so that you can see where to cut off your um, hems to make sure that they have stretched out. You still may have to go back later after it's been worn a few times because the fabrics are different. They may stretch out or shrink at a different rate. Hopefully you've washed your garments. It is very, very important. Those are my reversing hacks. I hope you enjoy it. I, ha I have so many more things. <laughs> want to reverse. I don't know why, but I do love doing it. So I hope this was helpful. Keep making and we'll see you soon around the workshop. Bye-bye.